Hey, what's up, guys? It's Showtime. Showtime Trade Fits over here. Size, growth, get big. All right. Hat compliments of Woody Woodhouse and uh, Neutralite Vitamins. So, the uh, today's question: uh, What does it take to be a uh, a bodybuilding champion? So. You know, it depends, man, on who you ask and what freaking level you want to go up to, right? Because, you know, for for some people, I qualify, you know, for that, you know, but but uh, what what level, right? Are you at the novice level? Are you at the national level? Are you at the state level? Novice, amateur, or pro, right? And so, obviously, I'm not going to give you a whole lot of, of advice on being the best pro in the in the world, right? Because you know, I never got my pro card, so that would be kind of unfair, you know, for me to take the uh, credentials, I guess, so to speak, away from the uh, from the from the top dogs, right? That are, uh, you know, um, you know, top five Olympia, top ten Olympia, uh, top three, top two, best one, world champion, right? World champion. Uh, it's not really. It's not, I haven't really earned that right. So fair enough. I can I can give you good tips on what it takes to win at the novice state national. You know this this still kind of it's still kind of fucking you know overstep my bounds a little bit, right? Because I haven't competed on the national stage, so you know I don't know where I would place. To be honest, I've been up against people that have been top two, top three nationals before and even beaten beaten a couple of guys that have been, you know, top in the you know in nationals and, and even got a pro card, you know. Not in that particular show, so I can't even count those. The ones where I've actually beat guys that went on to be pro, but the guys that uh that were like second or third in nationals like a week or two later, yeah, I think I could, you know, uh those years with that physique uh, possibly could have maybe cracked top 10, you know. Granted, you don't get overlooked. And that's the thing. I don't like to say woulda, coulda, shoulda, because I don't fucking know, right? I didn't do it, right? You don't want to walk in the arena at that, at that level. You can't claim that title. So fair enough? I've claimed some titles, so I have a little bit of, a little bit of insight to the basics. So, a lot of it's, you know, people think that it's a big ego sport, bodybuilding. It's not true, man. If you got too big of an ego, you gotta leave your ego at the door, right? Because say you're a good athlete, uh, and you're really strong, and you, your thing is that you're fucking strong, right? Well, as your strength starts to dip down a little bit, even if it's a little bit, your ego plays games. You're gonna feel smaller, because you're gonna feel weaker if you're not doing the same weights, so you're not going to feel as big, you're not going to feel strong, right, so the ego fucks with you, so you got to get that out of there, you got you can't, can't let the ego get in the way, right, or people will, you know, uh, because they're losing fat and water and all this stuff, they start to think, uh, getting small, I got to pull out of the show, right, ego pulls you out, right, Putting the ego aside and being humble and going through the process and and having the balls and testing the fortitude to get up there when you feel like you're not ready when usually you're when you think you're too small and not ready that's usually when you're you're your best right sometimes you feel too big too full that ego is filled you usually ain't winning right because it probably means you're not in shape yet so. That's a thing. It's conditioning, 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 conditioning. You definitely need the, you know, some size. Uh, you need symmetry, aesthetics. You need to be a good poser, right? Because I've seen guys pose their way up from third or second into first, or pose their way down from first or second down to third, fourth, fifth. It happens, right? Posing can be that important, right? So you need to be on your game and be the very best poser on stage that you can because if your posing sucks you're not going to do as good, right? The only way you're going to do as well is if you freaking dominate your class so bad that 
you can freaking do jumping jacks and freaking hopscotch and just jump rope and shit and still win the fucking show, right? As it, once you start getting against some good guys and gals, you ain't gonna be fucking hopscotching and jump roping and all that other bullshit and fucking having, you know, hacky sack, all that fucking bullshit. You're gonna have, you're gonna be able to do it. To wipe the floor with you, right? You can't be playing around. So you gotta have your posing on point. It's gotta be as close to perfect as you can get it, man. If I don't pose at least 20 minutes a day, I fucking start shaking, fucking like a fucking amateur up there. Like I've never fucking done the sport. You get a little cocky, so oh, I don't really have the time to pose this prep. Da, 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 da. Find the time because if you if you haven't been practicing, you're gonna be fucking shaking, man. You're gonna be shaking. You're gonna forget to flex your legs. Your legs are gonna look like they're washed out. Or even if you start with the legs and make sure that's there before you come, in, you might forget this flex. You don't know. You know everything needs to be dialed in just right, and your confidence level's got to be up there. Even if you don't feel confident. You just go out there and then you got to pretend you're going to be somebody else then. If you can't, you can't think you can do it, then you got to pretend you're somebody else. So pick your favorite bodybuilder or something that your physique kind of emulates a little bit and just pretend you're that fucking guy, right? You pretend you're fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger or Phil Heath or fucking Kai Green or, or uh, Dennis Wolf, Lee Priest, whoever the fuck you want to emulate, right? What your body type is. If you're a short guy, you probably don't want to emulate a tall guy, your physique's going to be a little different, but maybe, you know, if you're a, t you're a tall guy, you can imitate Gunter Schlerkamp, fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger, these guys, if you're kind of medium size, like a 5'7", average Mr. Olympia is 5'7", right, maybe you can emulate a Phil Heath or a Ty Green, right, um, if you're really short, you can go after, you know, emulating somebody like you know, Lee Priest, if you got the mass, too, because he can do some shit that the little guys that are short and little can't do, right? So kind of know your your body type and what works and flows well for your physique. And you're only going to learn that by studying like crazy. Or tire a coach and take all that study time out and just practice, but otherwise you're going you're gonna to have to put in the work, man. You got to freaking... You can't hire a coach. You're gonna have to get get in front of that fucking uh, footage of uh, video footage, right? And and study hours and hours and hours and hours of posing, and practice hours of posing, and hit the gym really hard and get your nutrition on point, right? And you gotta study that shit. You gotta put in thousands and thousands of hours and thousands and thousands of dollars into the sport. What you put in is what you're gonna get out. And so if, unless you've got the right people helping you, to where you don't have to put in those thousands of of hours of, of studying and stuff, you just got to put in the, now the, the time of the actual training and and, and uh, sleep and and your meals because somebody else has got it, you know, helping you with all that. Then you can then you can save some some time and maybe even some money, right? But otherwise, you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to grind from the ground up, right? It's like like building the fucking like building Rome all over again and shit. So that's that's where we're at, and that's what uh, just a couple of basic little pointers, right? Even just the little things, like if you're gonna hit a pose, and you get in there, if you're not up tall here, if you're slouched down here, forget about it. Looks sloppy, okay? That looks like shit. Get it up there, and pose and flex and f and suck that in. That vacuum's not even very good right now because I'm not in shape. But it's still a better vacuum than some guys can do even when they're in shape. Sound fair enough? But you want to do belly button to spine is what you want to do and you can work on that. And it gets better with time. You can get that thing to make the illusion of your waist looking like it's this fucking big around, right? Especially in that side chest and shit. You can look, look pretty freaky, right? Like a ginormous chest delts and teeny tiny waist freaking two guys are really fucking good at that fucking that, that aren't pros like flex with and stuff that could do that really well matt loudon and 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 uh, uh porter matt porter those guys when they hit their side chest they're fucking i watched that i watched that video like 
50 times on the off season. They need that waist look like it's that little, right? I watched the freaking Andre Scott. You know, he's giving me pointers over the years. He had a belly button to spine, freaking um, pose with the front double arm bicep. Amazing. It looked like he had no waist. It looked like he was touching his belly button to the to his backbone. It was crazy, right? And uh, if you've ever worked with with Roger Baker, if he's ever coached you before, he's going to tell you that all day long. Belly button to spine, belly button to spine, belly button to spine. If he doesn't, and you don't get that down, you're going to control your breathing. He's going to come up and smack you in the head and can get you there. Not not literally smack you in the head, but you're going to feel like you got smacked in the head, right? He's going to he's going to get on you, right? You're going to make sure you do that shit right. So. That's what I'm talking about. So you got to make sure all your ducks in a row if you want to be the champion. If you just want to do it as a hobby, it's an expensive hobby. It can be a dangerous one, you know, if you're pushing the limits. Uh, so in my opinion, you might as well go for the win. Then, win or not, you didn't sell yourself short. You can look at yourself, if you're dead fucking last, but if you're peeled to the bone, well, peeled to the bone, you're probably going to be dead last, number one. But... You did every fucking thing you can. You look in the mirror and go, fuck, you know, did, did the best I could do aside from actually die, right? If you've done you've done everything to where the, the, you've done as much as you could possibly do without physically dying, you've done your job, right? Should I prayed before in, in a stall one time. I was like, man, Lord, because I, I had to go in there and, and sit down because I was woozy. And I freaking felt like I went out of my body and up on the ceiling. I was all fucked up. And I said, it was before, it was either right after, right before pre -judge. I think it was right after because everybody was telling me how uh, I was probably going to win the show. And I was like, man, Lord, just please let me get through this show. And then it, if you want to take me, and that's fine. But let me get my fucking trophy first, right? Let me get that first place trophy. This is before I'd ever won, you know, a bodybuilding competition except for... A little one, a little Mr. Tri Cities, what I had won in '96, which didn't count because fucking Purvis, who always fucking beats me, fucking he was he was off that year, so uh, technically I didn't I didn't win it. And then Ben won the overall, but in '97 I won my class and the overall. Uh, every state novice, and uh, was for, for for novice I was real peeled, right? It was under three percent, so. It, uh, it was fun, but it's one of those things where, you know, there's been some shows that I've done that pre, I pretty fucked up, you know, afterwards, only a couple of them, usually I still feel pretty good afterwards, I remember one year, it's freaking just 09 or 2011, I think it was still 09, fucking had a sciatic nerve running down both glutes and both hammies, couldn't hardly move, had a hard time breathing, <laughs> And freaking my wife came in, freaking this is right after the show, like a day or two afterwards, and I'm just like, and then she has the nerves to come in and said, like, da, da, da. like, don't, da, 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 get the fuck out of here. It's like, fucking let me die, because I thought I was gonna die. Like, just fucking let me, leave me in peace, I said. I don't wanna tell her I was, yeah, I thought I was gonna die, because I don't want a bunch of attention and more, da, 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 we take to the hospital, and just leave me fuck alone, right? <laughs> and, uh, of course I didn't die, so it's all good, but, uh, yeah, so that's all I got for you. It's been showtime. Showtime should fit us over here. Size, growth, get big. All right. Showtime Sandberg, Mr. Washington, Mr. Oregon, Mr. Empire, Mr. Evergreen State, and Mr. Tri Cities. And that's about it. Other than some guest posts. Take care and God bless.